Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's on this sure to be very sunny day. It is a service of morning prayer, right two today, and we do not have an organist, so we do have an accompanist for our second, our recessional hymn, but our processional hymn, we're going to rely on members of our choir and we're gonna sing a cappella, and it's hymn 525, it is a familiar tune, so I'm hopeful that we'll all be able to uh, carry on. So hymn 525. Thank you. 
say it in unison today. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death have entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me, I came to grieve sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul. For the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death. My eyes from tears and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Now refrain is, I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. You may be seated for the last one.
Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with the greatest strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no speak mistake is mistaken as a person, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder whenever the will of the pirate directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of inequity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast, bird, a reptile, and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame, tame and tame the tongue. A restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse, curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour, pour, pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. because we have no music today for a um, gradual in if you want to call it that the hymn before the gospel we will say together canticle 20 which is Jack. 
rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, but turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd of his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. Thank you. As we said at the very beginning, may the words of my mouth and the meditation in my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength. Today's lesson is, I'm going to really be referring more to the letter from James and what he got said there. But in the gospel lesson, it is important that Jesus asked, who do the people say that I am? And the disciples answered, John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the prophets. Jesus then asked, but who do you say that I am? And Peter took that leap of faith and answered, you are the Messiah. Now in Judaism, at that time, Messiah always meant the glorious future king of Israel. Though he was supposed to be a greater king than the, than the kings of the earth at that time. But Jesus is not the Messiah that they're understanding an earthly king, however glorious. That was not Jesus. He is the heavenly son of man, or as Mark often preferred to refer to him as the son of God, though not in today's lesson. It is the reiteration of the term Messiah, Christ, as we know, that justifies its application to Jesus. But this understanding had not yet happened in the disciples' time, and they did not understand it themselves. Hence, that is why Jesus orders the disciples not to tell anyone about him, and why even we hear oftentimes when he tells them, when he, when he heals somebody, well, don't tell anyone. It's because they think he's still going to be that earthly king of Israel. And so that's what backs up a lot of this. Don't tell anybody about me. Okay. So the rest of our um, reading from the gospel today, it begins and is often referenced to Jesus' first pronouncement of the passion. So he's telling them that they're going to be going to Jerusalem. I don't know if he knew up to that point that he was, but he's made up his mind now that they're going to be going to Jerusalem, that, you know, there's going to be a conflict between him and the scribes and the chief priests. He will be, he will suffer, he will be killed, and he will rise again on the third day. That's that passage, just a little covering for it. But the very last thing in it is, or one of the last 
He t- those who are ashamed of me and my words, my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. I want to talk about words today. Our first lesson. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Okay. Usually a word of comfort. Not always, though. And our second reading, excuse me, had a lot to do with many words. And it begins with, not many of you should become teachers because you will be judged with greater strictness. Your words, the words of teachers, Rather, it came teacher, teachers, or in this instance, saying it's also referring to those who speak for the ministry, you know, those who have it as a profession to speak, are judged with greater strictness. And I'm sure all of us expect our, our, um, our priests in this Episcopal church to, to, we put them at a little bit higher level than ourselves. So they do have a stricter standard. The lesson tells us that our tongue is a small member, yet it boasts great exploits, but it can be full of deadly poison. And from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. And my brothers and sisters, this ought not to be. Got a little story. My youngest granddaughter, she's a character. She's turned five, but way before that, she has a way with words. She knows words that no three, four, five-year-old normally come out with. So, of course, my son is always sending me text messages or emails about her little exploits. And, And a couple of my favorite, I'd like to... I can't give you, well, there's lots of favorites, but I can't give you all the details because it would take too long. But one of them is a day when she was wandering around the house, peering in every room. My son finally asked her what she's doing. She's got a little smirk on her face. Oh, I'm checking the occupancy of the rooms in the house to see how many of my stuffies, her stuffed animals, can be in it. They have lots of them. So, so we're going, she was not much over three occupancy. Where'd she get that from? I have no idea, but she used it appropriately. And it was, you know, and, and she was four. Another story, that, another one he sends me is, um, got to think here for a minute what the other one was. I didn't write it down. But, you know, she, <laughs> oh, that's just, you know, you can all laugh at that because we all sit there and, the same thing. But, you know, then, oh, it was something actually that happened early this spring. So she wasn't quite five, but she was four. And the girls have one of those marble mazes, you know, they're quite tall, and they have all these different pathways that you send marbles down. So they were watching them go down, watching them go down, spin down to the bottom, down these slides and shoots and everything. And all of a sudden, they dumped a whole bunch of them and they're all going down, but then they got clogged up in one place, and the marble started spilling all over the place. And all of a sudden, Abigail shouts out, we have a marble calamity. <laughs> and we're going, and my son's going, where'd she get that word from? We, her mother and father, we don't use it, he's telling me. <laughs> so she's already got an un- understanding of words, and let me tell you, she knows how to use them because she is able, when she's decided, she's stubborn too, so when she decides that she's in the right, she can outmaneuver my son with words <laughs> to what, perfectly logically why it should be done her way. And my son stands there and goes, I, I have nothing to come back at her with. And he says, she's got me again. And she's only five, so I can't imagine. I said, well, be prepared. <laughs> You're in for a good ride here. So it's just words, words, words. How important they are. And 
they define us as humans. And nothing is ever begun without the exchange of words. Even an individual's character is revealed by one's speech. My daughter, granddaughter's character is definitely being formed by their speech. And uh, the lesson tells us, compared to the whole of our bodies, our little tongues allow us to make sounds we can use as a language that can inspire even a nation to heroic action. But hot words, they start quarrels, destroy friendships, break up homes, instigate wars. But on the other hand, bold words of comfort can rescue a soul from despair. Bold words can strike powerful blows for justice. Inspired words can start feet marching toward the goal of human brotherhood. The reverberation of the closing sentence of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. I'd like to read it to you. Because even though we know it was many years ago, and it was short, it had a profound impact, and I think it still does. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, from that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we were here highly resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Powerful words. A lot like Churchill when he was talking about blood, sweat, and tears during World War II. The effect Jesus has had upon history has been mediated by his words. The effect Hitler had upon his people, likewise, by his words. Castro, leaders of Al Qaeda, American president, Martin Luther King, it goes on and on and on. The people who have influenced us for good or for evil with their words. Both glory and disgrace can come from speaking. And not only our leaders, but also from us. Is it any wonder then that it is written that Jesus said, by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned? How about the proverb, as children, I'm sure you all remember, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names can never hurt me. Is this proper really true? The wounds to the body made by stones may heal, but the hurt in the heart made by an insult may endure for a lifetime. If a person's religion gives them no control over their tongue so that their words will edify and not corrupt, then I would say that religion, their religion, is useless. I would like to share with you, and she didn't sit here, now a, a little poem that was written by Beth Day uh, about 1855 and entitled Three Gates of Gold. And I do believe that it's worth quoting for you today. So I want you to think that as I read this poem, because it, it starts with a bunch of 
dot, 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 dot. So that's an inference that your words and statements, what you say, okay, so then it goes dot, dot, dot. Three gates of gold, dot, dot, dot. Make it pass, remember your words, your statements. Make it pass before you speak three gates of gold. These narrow gates. First, is it true? Then, is it needful? In your mind, give a truthful answer. And the next is last and narrowest. Is it kind? And if to reach your lips at last, it passes through these gateways three, then you may tell the tale, nor fear what the results of speech may be. Three gates. Is it true? Is it needful? Is it kind? And I have one more thing I would like to read you. Is I, I've recently finished Anxious People. Yes, it's about words, but no, it's not. Because any book is full of words. And I would like to share you the very last chapter, which, as you can see, it's just this one short page. And I'm going to kind of alter a little to insert some things so that some words, so that it is relevant to words and what we say. The truth. The truth about all this, the truth is that this was a story about many different things, but most of all about words. Because we're doing the best we can, we really are, we're trying to be grown up and love each other and understand how the heck we're supposed to insert USB leads into something. We're looking for something to cling onto, something to fight for, something to look forward to. We're doing all we can to teach our children how to swim in this world we call life. We have all this in common and yet most of us remain strangers. And we never know what we do to each other and how your life is affected by my words and how my life is affected by your words. Perhaps we hurry past each other today and neither of us notice and the words, the fibers of your words brushed against mine for a single moment, and then they were gone. Did I hear you? Do I know who you are? So it finishes, when you get home this evening, when this day is over and the night takes us, Allow yourself a deep breath. Because we did make it through this day as well. And as James tells us, from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Remember, There'll be another day tomorrow. And you do have the opportunity always to make the choice to start anew. So think of the three gates of gold. Is it true? Is it needful? Is it kind?
ask you all to stand as we join in the Apostles' Creed found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And either standing or kneeling, whichever you prefer, um, we will be saying the Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. With you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And turning to page 98, let us say for the suffrage. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, who keeps us from all sin today, have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. vain. And our collect for this oops, got my bit there. For this Sunday is on the leaflet. We'll, we'll say the at the top, we'll say the contemporary collect for this Sunday. Together. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May we say together on page 99 and call it for the renewal of life. O oh God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all our desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a call it for peace. O oh God, we offer peace to the love of our crown, Lord, to know you to eternal life, and to serve you to the perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all the souls of our enemies, that we should be just in your defense. And now we hear the power of the name of spirits through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the uh, uh, turning to page 100, may we say the um, colleague that's second from the bottom for intercession. Almighty and everlasting God. By the spirit of the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their formation and ministry they may truly and godly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us remember today in the Episcopal Church of Connecticut's prayer cycle, 
parishes, St. John's of Stamford, Calvary of Stonington, and St. Mark's at the Incon campus in Stores. For wider witness and ministries, may we keep in our prayers the province of New England, the Diocese of Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Western Massachusetts, their bishops, clergy, parish and diocesan staff, and congregation, and for the provincial synod, all provincial networks. On our own parish prayer list, May we have prayers for love and healing for Abigail, Robin Caldwell, Travis Caldwell, Tony Paradise, Tim O'Kane, Penny Van Gastel, Kathy Rumel, Sandy, Ian Moore, and David White. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other prayers we want to consider today are for the ongoing ravages of the pandemic, for those that are struggling with addiction, and for their families, for those directly affected by any of the recent climate disasters, of which there have been many, and of course for all those who were lost 20 years ago on Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. We have some prayers. There's a prayer of thanks for John's life, that he may be able to continue to enjoy all that has to be offered in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. prayers. A prayer of help for Kathy. As she faces her last day, may she find comfort as the Lord spends time with her during the remainder of her earthly days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And this is a prayer of help and thanks for Andrew Kasicki, who 20 years ago yesterday signed on to the military an hour before the first attack on the Twin Towers. God bless and keep all the souls of that day and continue to watch over those who have survived. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayers. Yeah. 
offerings, and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Come and be O Lord of thy might, O thy creativity. In honor of all those people who served in the forces and our first responders, I would like us all to join in a prayer on page 823, prayer number 25. It says, for those in the armed forces of our country, and when we come to the men and women of our armed forces, I would like to also insert in there not only the armed forces, but our first responders. They have given much. So page 823. Almighty God, you would commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces and our first responders at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which you set them. And grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Christ our Lord. Amen. And I have one last short little prayer. Well, and it's about words and deeds. I offer up unto you my prayers and intercessions for those especially who have in any matter hurt, grieved, or found fault with me or who have done me any damage or displeasure. For all those whom also at any time I may have vexed, troubled, burdened, and scandalized by words or deeds, knowing we were in ignorance, that you would grant us all equally pardon for our sins and for our offenses against each other. Take away from our hearts, O oh Lord, all suspiciousness, indignation, wrath, and contention, and whatsoever may hurt charity and lessen brotherly love. Have mercy, O Lord. Have mercy on those that crave your mercy. Give grace to them that stand in need, and make us such as that we may be worthy to enjoy your grace and go forward to life eternal. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and always. Amen. Now, before we do our recessional hymn, I just want to ask, are, are there any announcements to come before the parish today? And do you have any? Or... David has something he'd like to say. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome, David. It's a uh, good night to you. Anna Rutter, God bless us for your friends for coming over here.
Is there anything else? Ian, uh, you have some stuff? I just want to let everybody know in advance we're going to uh, hopefully plan another soup sale this fall with the Weather Friends Chili. I don't know if our soup sale will be late October, early November, but um, seems like a good time and we'll keep you tuned in. So um, get your favorite recipes ready. Then our final uh, hymn our, is going to be hymn 719. It's a patriotic hymn. Betsy, are you going to? Oh, she's, so she's, she's giving up her, her musical duties and passing on. But it's, a, it's an easy hymn. It's one we all know very well. 719, oh beautiful, her spacious skies. the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.